Good morning and happy Resurrection Day. I know that this isn't the way that we had planned for this day to be when we were planning a few months ago, um, but I do believe today that God is still going to minister to us today, and He's still going to reach out and touch us. He's going to heal us. He's going to save some, and He's going to encourage us today as we worship Him. We may be limited uh, because of the way that we're worshiping today, but did you, did you know that our limitations does not limit what God can do? It never has and never will. We've always been a limited creature, but God's power is unlimited. So this may not be the ideal way for us to worship together. It, it would be much better if you guys were here with us, but uh, it could be worse. It could be worse. I, I remember the first Easter Sunday morning was a pretty bad day for the disciples of Jesus. They were all gathered in a room, and the Bible says that they were weeping, and they were mourning, and they were fearful, and they were confused about the future, and their doors were locked in fear for the, of the Jews, and I guess you could say that they were huddled together, and they were practicing group social distancing from the rest of the world. But you know, we have the luxury of hindsight. We can look back and see how God brought them through their days of trials and uncertainties, and we can rest assured that He will do the same for us in this day and time. He will get us through these trials and uncertainties. So I say to, to you today, let your heart be at peace. Let your heart be glad and rest in the assurance that God's got this trial. He's got this virus. And more importantly, he's got you in his hands. So just be at peace. And uh, we're, we're just going to worship the Lord today. But before we do that, I want us to continue practicing uh, the prayer that uh, the scripture 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where God asked his people to pray in times like this. So if you would, would you take a minute and let's pray together. Let's practice 2 Chronicles 7, 14 that says, If my people will, will pray, humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. So would you join with me as we pray for our land today? Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just come to you, Lord. We humble ourselves and, and come to you. Lord, I just pray this morning that you would move in this nation, Lord, move in this world, Lord God. Lord, I would ask you to bring healing to those who need a healing touch uh, from the coronavirus, Lord, that's going around. Bring healing to those who need a healing from you this morning, God. Lord, I just pray that you would bring peace to our hearts and minds, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you would just let trust arise in your saints. Lord, let us look to you and, and have a knowing and assurance that you are in control, oh God. And Lord, let us take this time to reevaluate and to humble ourselves and to get rid of, of junk in our lives that are pulling us and separating us away from you, oh God. I pray that for this nation, this community in particular, and the whole world, Lord. Let us become more focused on you, God. Let us realize even more than ever, Lord God, our need for you. Lord, I just pray that you would touch our hearts. And Lord, let our hearts be wholly devoted to you wholly devoted to you. Thank you, Jesus. Give us an undivided heart, Lord. And God, I just pray for revival. I pray for revival in this area, in this community, in this state, in this nation, God. And I pray for revival around the world, Lord God. Revival that changes men's hearts and lives, Lord God, that teaches us to walk with you. Lord, we ask for revival in our land, oh God. 
please heal our land. Lord, we ask that you remove this virus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I invite you to worship with us right where you are. Uh, the Bible says to sing to the Lord. Let's sing to Him this morning. Let's just spend some time worshiping Him.
place of death and the garden is a place of life. And Lord, we thank you. You turn graves into gardens. I search the world, but it could not feel.
Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Lord has a word of encouragement for someone. Um, he wants you to know that He's heard your cries, and you're not coming unglued because He's the glue that holds you together. You just continue to rest in Him and trust in Him, and He's going to hold you together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I believe the Lord's also calling someone back to more Bible time. He wants you to make sure you carve out that time in your schedule to get into His Word. I actually see you strapping yourself in a chair, basically, and I really feel like that strap's going to be for two purposes. One, to hold you there so the distractions won't pull you away. And number two is because what you're going to begin to read is going to make you want to take off like a rocket. It's just going to be so edifying and so blessing uh, into your life that uh, it's just going to be uh, making you want to just blast off like a rocket. So just encourage you, whoever that may be, just to get into your word, get alone, get into a chair and start reading God's word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we want to take a second and pray for needs this morning. Uh, also, feel like that the Lord wants to heal somebody's ear, maybe even somebody's left ear, whatever may be going on with that. If that's you, we're just going to turn to the Lord and ask Him for, for healing. If, if you need a healing touch in your body for anything else, or if you need a healing touch for uh, your emotions, or your worries, or your stress at this time, let's all go to the Lord together. And let's just raise up a battle cry. And let's ask our God to move upon us and among us this morning. Would you join me with in prayer, please? Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you that you are our supplier, Lord. Whatever we need, you supply us, Lord God. Lord, God, we lift up those this morning who need a healing touch in their body from you. Lord, those who are suffering and fighting cancer today, those with liver issue, Lord God. Lord, other needs that, Lord, are represented in this group of prayer. God, I just ask you to move even now, even now, Lord God, and bring healing. Thank you, Lord. Bring healing to the hand that needs a healing touch this morning. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just pray for deliverance for the one who's, who's trapped, Lord God, with pills this morning. Lord, just deliver them, I pray, oh, God, as only you can do it, yes. Lord Jesus. It's nothing better than you. Lord, bring deliverance this morning. And God, bring peace to those who have fear this morning those who are afraid Lord of these times and of this ride that we're on at this moment God 
Lord, I just pray that you would calm them, settle them, settle their boat, oh God. Just bring peace to the water for those who need peace. God, you are so good. And we are just so thankful to be able to turn to you for our every need, Lord Jesus. Because you meet our every need. Lord, we thank you and we do praise you. You're so worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy that you show us. Thank you for the compassion that you have for us, oh God. Lord, we ask for all these miracles in your name. The name, the only name by which men can be saved. And that name is the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just thank the Lord for what he's done and is doing this morning. Also, if you can, send some messages on Facebook or YouTube and thank this wonderful praise team. And actually, we have another guest drummer, Mr. Charlie Darty, back here. He's stepped in this morning. We're so thankful for him. Thank you, Charlie. We appreciate it very much. So send out some love to these guys we're so blessed with the music here, no doubt, no doubt. It's always wonderful. The worship's always incredible here. I just have a couple things in way of announcement. Uh, as, as we've been saying uh, through these days um, with the virus and confinement and people losing their job, if, if, you, need, um, if you need some help, at this time, if you could use some food or toiletries, we do have care packages made up. There's a few left here at the church, and we've had people that have been out helping others. So if you need help, please contact us here at the church. We would be glad to help you. So just let us know. Also, uh, the way to get your tithe and offering to the church is through the mail. Uh, if you would, please mail your check to us. Um, that Our address is 1709 Alexander Avenue, and it's 42303. So we thank you for that. We bless you for that. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter's asleep. Judas is betraying, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling and his spirit's burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. 
but they don't know it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. Sunday has come. It actually came a couple thousand years ago, but because of how great a day that this day is and the impact and the changes it brought to the whole world, to all of mankind, we still celebrate this day all over this globe because of the great day of what God has done for you and me. You see, Jesus Christ came out of that tomb. He is risen from the dead. If you're going to look for his bones, you won't find them there. He's not there. He is risen. Jesus is risen. In a lot of churches, they would repeat, he is risen indeed. So I'm going to say this, and you can repeat your part if you don't mind. Jesus is risen. Awesome job for those of you who did that. But you know, he did rise from the dead. And he conquered sin and death in that act of the resurrection. And he confirmed what he told everybody around him. When he was walking uh, this, on, the, on this earth, he told him from John eleven twenty five. 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Those who serve him, who follow after him, and now because of the resurrection, we can live what Jesus called the abundant life. We can have and live a resurrected life. Jesus termed it the abundant life. But if you have your Bible with you, and I hope you do, if not grab one really quick, we're going to open up to the 28th chapter of Matthew and start there this morning. We're going to read just verses 1 through 6 to show you what happened here. Verse 1 reads like this, it says, Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And oh, the changes 
that that brings to you and me and to the whole world. You know, Good Friday, I talked mainly about and focused upon Jesus, and we wanted to spend time thanking Him through our Good Friday service and, and just bring an honor to Him for what He did for us. Today, I, I want to do the same thing. I want to bring honor to Him and, and give thanks to Him as well, but I also uh, want to show and talk about the benefits that we received from what Jesus did for us. I love the song that we closed the Wednesday night service, I mean, I'm sorry, the Good Friday service with, why should I gain from his reward? That because God is so good, we gain from what Jesus did for us. If you didn't see the Good Friday service, I'd ask you to go back and watch that because really we just talked about Obviously, the music was great as usual. The worship time was just tremendous. We just worshiped the Lord, but uh, we spoke basically just about Jesus and what he did for us and, and what he went through on what we call Holy Week these days. But today, I want to talk about the resurrected life and the benefits we have because Jesus Christ is no longer dead. He came out of the tomb, out of the grave. And because of that, we live today. So yeah, he did make a way for all people now to make it to heaven. That's one of the benefits. Uh, he made a way when we leave this world, we can make it to heaven. Uh, but also, he made a way, as I said earlier, that we could live the resurrected life, which Jesus at one time spoke and said, it, it, he called it the abundant life. You can have life and have it more abundantly. That's what he offers us because of the resurrection. Let me show you, if you would, if you have your Bible, turn in Romans the, to Romans the 8th chapter, verse 11. And uh, we read there that it says, If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave, from the dead, can also live in you and bring life to you, to your mortal body. You might ask, how does that happen? I'm glad you asked. That happens when any person on the face of this earth turns to God and says, Lord, I need you. I want to serve you. I have lived life my way all these years, and I am still not walking with you. I need you. It happens when we come to the Lord. We're, we're willing to submit our will to his will, when we're willing to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, and we're willing to say, I want to serve you from this day forward, you actually become born again at that point. The Bible makes it clear that we become new creations in Christ. The old things pass away. We're going to look at some of that here in a minute, some of the benefits uh, from this new life, and the old things pass away because when you make that commitment to Christ, when you put your faith and trust in Him to be your Lord, the Holy Spirit of God actually begin, begins to dwell inside of you. He lives inside of you. The Bible says in Corinthians, know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So His Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And that Holy Spirit begins to make changes. It makes changes to make us and, 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 and drive us and to carve us out a new image, and, and we began to look more like Jesus. Jesus lived the abundant life. He had peace in the storm. He had rest when everybody else was worried. He had strength when everybody else was weak. He had joy when everybody else was upset. He had, uh, he had miracles 
uh, that flowed through him. He had and lived the abundant life. And now, because of what he's done in the spirit, raising him up out of that grave, we can have that same spirit live within us, and he can raise you out of the grave you've been living in. I don't care what your life has looked like. I don't care where you are right now. If, if you're in the worst place you could be, if, if you're sitting in prison because of, of uh, the mistakes you've made, if you're sitting in a, a prison of just fear and anxiety, if you're sitting in a prison trapped by alcohol or drugs, if you're set in a prison trapped by anger, or if you're in a grave of, of just deceit and lying, God can free you from that prison and raise you to life again uh, out of that grave by His Holy Spirit living within you. So, I've often said that if man could make an x-ray machine that could pick up the Holy Spirit, anyone and everyone who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior could walk behind that x-ray machine and you would see the Spirit of God living inside of them. So if you need change in your life today, ask God, seek God, and let Him make those changes that you need. Hey, listen, it doesn't matter if you've been around church all your life and you need changes, seek God, ask Him to change you, to make, make you be more like Jesus, to make the abundant life become more evident in your life. So if you've been around church all your life, or if this is the first time you've ever heard the good news that Jesus Christ can change you and rescue you, ask the Lord to help you and let Him help you. Submit to Him, and He will change you. He will change you. So I want to I look at that abundant life. I, I want to just take a sneak peek. We could talk for years and days and, and, and months about this if about the abundant life and what it looks like. But I'm just going to take a, a, an example uh, from the last week of Jesus' life here on earth um, when, as he was fully human and, and fully man. And I want us to look at how Jesus, who is our example, he is the example of the abundant life. He is the example of the way that we should live our lives. I want us to take a look at his life at the very end when he was going through the hardest times of his life here on earth. And actually, th this last few days. So let's, let's look at the fruit of a life well lived. We see the start. We see the, it start when Jesus was in the garden. He'd already had the last supper with his disciples they moved to the garden. He went to prayer, and he knew what was about to happen. He knew that they were on their way to arrest him. Judas had already left. He knew what Judas was going to do. And uh, so uh, he knew that they were coming to arrest him. He knew that his, the next step would be the trials. He knew what was about to happen to him. And in those hardest moments when he was going through when he was standing on the outside looking in, in to what was about to happen, you know, that's when we become more stressed than we need to be. Worrying about what happens in the future. Worrying about tomorrow and the uncertainties that we can't, uh, that we can't control in our lives. We usually typically, typically become more stressed uh, worrying about tomorrow than we do when tomorrow gets here and we're walking through the issues that we had to walk through. You know why? Because God will give you a grace for every situation that you have to walk through. So don't worry about the hard situations to come because God will take care of those. He will give you grace to walk, to walk in those days. We stress ourselves out by worrying about those. Don't worry about those. But when Jesus was looking out at that time. We need to say the same thing that he said. In the garden praying, he said the most important thing that we can pray, especially when we're facing hard times, he said, 
right in the middle of that, Lord, if there's any other way, that will work for me too. But nonetheless, not what I want, but what you want. Not my will, but your will be done. That's the first sign of the abundant life, that we're willing to do whatever God wants us to do. And I'm telling you today that you can trust God with His will for your life because His will for your life will always work out better than your will for your life. Pray today, God, not my will, but your will be done in my life. We also see Jesus and and. And the, another example of the abundant life, the resurrected life that he offers to us is, uh, is love and how he loved people. It was amazing from the beginning moments of the crucifixion when they went to nail him, his hands and feet to the cross and he turned to them and, and he looked at them and he prayed, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. You know why that the Lord could pray that? Because he realized, he understood that they weren't his enemies. He knew who his enemies were and are. It is the devil and his cronies. These people, there's still a chance for them to make it to heaven. And Jesus knows that. That's something that we need to learn as well. We need to learn that those who are mistreating us, we want to say the same thing, to get to the place where we can say, Father, forgive them. We need to have God's abundant life, the resurrected life living within us where our concerns for others are greater than the insults that they may give to us. That our concern and our love, our love would be big enough, big enough, to pray for those who mistreat us and hurt us. Big enough to want them and to desire people, all people, to make it to heaven. They're not your enemy. They still have a chance, as long as they're on this earth, to come to the Lord. We need to love people enough to let them uh, know that God loves them. We need to love people enough to forgive them. You know, it's not our nature it's not our nature to, uh, uh, to do that. It, it's not within us, in ourselves, just to be loving and forgiving like that. Man, at a moment like that, what, like Jesus was in when they were nailing him to the cross, at that moment, if they were nailing me to a cross, I would probably say, instead of saying, God, forgive them, I would probably say, God, sick them. Sick them, God. That's the difference that the resurrected life can make within you. He can change you, and He will change you. He will take your hate and give you love if you let Him, if you let Him do that. We also see the the resurrected life, the abundant life. We see from Jesus' example that it's to be steadfast and to be faithful to God. The abundant life, the resurrection life can give you faithfulness. It can give you steadfastness. We see that again on the cross. We see when Jesus was on the cross, he was there to finish the plan for his life. The main reason he came to earth, to die for our sin, so that you and I could be forgiven for sin. He was there, and then we see those around the cross, they begin to, to yell at him, Things that, that they would hope would get him uh, to come down off the cross. Well, I say they would. The enemy of God wanted him down off the cross. And so he, he had those standing around Jesus saying things like, Ah, look at him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. Or, oh, hey, if you're the son of God, ha, 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 won't you come down off that cross you're walking on? But uh, the cross you're upon, and show us that you're the, the Son of God. Would, would Jesus, having the Spirit in him, living the resurrected life already, remain steadfast 
and faithful to God and the plan for his life. Look, the enemy of God will try to trip you up just like the enemy tried to get Jesus down off that cross. The enemy will say things to us to to try to stop us from the mission God's got us on, try to stop us from just walking and living for him, that being our mission, just to walk with him. He will say things like this to you and me. He says, he says things like this, it's okay, everybody else is doing it, you can do it, it's not that big a deal. And uh, look, Jesus will forgive you, one, one, one time won't hurt you. And, and then we also hear things like this, I, I don't think it's sin anymore, I think, you know, we're, gosh, that's, that's archaic days, that's, you know, that's in the past, it's not a sin anymore. The enemy will tell you those things through other people and then sometimes just make those thoughts in your head. But the abundant life, the resurrected life that Jesus comes to give you, and that Holy Spirit living within us is called the Spirit of Truth. It'll let you and I know that those are lies. That's not true. We know better than that. We know better that we know that what Jesus once called sin is still sin today. We we know that one time doing wrong will hurt you. It will hurt you. You know, we see examples of that in the Bible. We see David and Bathsheba that one time really messed up a lot of things in his life. That one time. So the, the abundant life, the resurrected life will, will enable you to be faithful and steadfast in your faith. And then on the mission and the plan God has for your life. God has for your life. You know, sometimes the enemy may even whisper things like this to you. He may whisper, don't worry about witnessing to them. If they're supposed to be saved, well, God will get them saved. Look, God, by raising Jesus from the dead, gives us the resurrected life. And it gives us a spiritual backbone. Where we can say, no, I'm not caving into that lie. It gives us the power to live a godly life. That means the power to have self-control. You know, it gives us the power. Look, young people and teenagers especially, it seems like at your age it's easier to feel, feel peer pressure, to want to cave and, and, and to join in the, the participation with the sin that's going on around you. People will, people did me, they've done many people, oh, come on, it won't hurt you. One, one drink won't make a difference. One time won't make a big deal. You will hear that. But the resurrected life that Jesus offers you and I enables us to be more concerned about what God thinks about us than what people think about us. I just want to speak a truth. I want you to remember this. See, one day, one day we'll have to give an answer to God for everything we've done. We won't have to give an answer to all the people for everything we've done. But we will to God. We will to God. God can change you and he can change me to be more like Jesus. That's what their resurrected life does. Uh. There are many other changes that Jesus brings to us from the resurrection of the gr- from the grave. Uh, I just want to speak about a couple more. You know, you know, the resurrection. We we could we could we could talk again for for a very long time about all the good things that God brings us through the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. Because uh, one thing it did it. it it solidified every word Jesus said and every action that he took. But there's just a couple more things I want to talk about. The, the next thing, if you still have your Bibles, I want you to turn, if you will, to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, the third verse. Third verse says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has caused us to be born again 
to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can have hope living inside us that gives us comfort through every hard time that we go through. You see, Jesus is the greatest example to us of someone going through a hard time. He went through things that you and I will probably never go through. There, there have been other Christians in history that have gone through and that have been crucified and have been burned at the stake. But for most of us in America uh, these days, the most we'll get is maybe being mocked uh, for, for our faith. So Jesus is certainly is our example of, of how we should live through the hard times. The resurrected life, because of his resurrection, we can have a living hope. A living hope means that we've seen God take care of us in the past. We've seen God take care of Jesus, what looked to be the worst thing that could happen through the death and uh, the burial. But, but then we saw the resurrection. He changed everything by the resurrection. The same thing happens to us that, that, that he did for his son. Even though we go through extremely hard times, we go through trials, God will bring you out of each and every trial that you go through. We have a living hope inside of us. That living hope, that means that we know that God will bring us through everything that we go through. So we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about the trials that are coming our way. We don't have to be fearful. Here's kind of an example. It's kind of like watching a replay of a basketball game. When we look back and see what, what the Lord has done for so many of us, for us in our lives, how he's brought us through every trial, but we look back and we look at Holy Week, we look what Jesus went through and how bad it looked, and then the, the, the glorious day and the glorious thing that God made out of that trial. He brought new life. He brought a resurrected life, an abundant life out of the trial and all the other good things that happened through that trial, but he got Jesus through that trial. We can look back at those things and it's kind of like I said, watching a replay of a basketball game. Like if you're watching a replay of a UK game, and you know that UK already won that game, so you can watch the whole game without getting upset, even if they fall behind. Even if you're watching them play that LSU game where they were well, I don't know, I can't remember how far down in points they were, but they were so far down it looked hopeless that they would not win that game. But you know what? When you're watching that game and you know the outcome of that game, you don't get upset. You just enjoy it. You just enjoy it. That's the same thing that living hope offers to you and I. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, we can have a living hope inside of us. We know what the outcome is going to be. Our outcome is going to be good. So we don't have to be all stressed and worried through, throughout the game, throughout the trial. We know what's going to happen at the end. At the end of the game, at the end of the trial, you and I win. We win. Because Jesus came out of the grave, we too can come out of the grave. We're going to rise up. We're going to have victory. We're going to have the joy of of winning because of what Jesus did for us. So, so we can have living hope. And the last thing I want to mention to you that Jesus brought to us from his death on a cross and from coming out of that tomb is that we can have forgiveness of sin and we no longer have to be slaves to sin. You say, Jerry, what does slaves to sin mean? That means, you know, I sin all the time. 
on a regular basis and I just can't get rid of it. You don't have to live that way anymore. Because the resurrection of Jesus that gives us resurrection life, that gives us the abundant life, you don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. You can start today by asking Jesus to forgive you of your sin, to forgive you of your past, to wash you clean on the inside, and to fill you with His Holy Spirit so that you can live a resurrected life. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that you'll never sin again like me. I never sin. I'm just kidding. Relax. We do trip and we still mess up, but, that, but we get up, we ask for forgiveness, we get washed off, and we move forward. Sin is not our master anymore. It's not like I, I can't get away from it. I will, I will overcome it because of the resurrected life. Look, you can overcome addictions to sin. You can overcome pornography. You can overcome abuse. You can overcome addictions, drug addiction, alcohol addiction. You can overcome your anger, your hate, your malice. All of these were defeated when Jesus came out of the tomb. They're all defeated. You don't have to live that way anymore. It's a new day. It's a new covenant. It's a new plan. You don't have to be trapped in your old self, in your old sin anymore. You can be free. You can be free. You might say, Jerry, how can I get free? Well, again, it's by going to Jesus and asking him to come into your life and to begin to walk with him, to make him your God, to serve him first. I'm going to ask you today, if, if you want a new start, if you want a new beginning, if you want to come out of that tomb you've been living in, if you want to shake off the, the dirt and take off the dead man's clothes and, and, and be clothed in, in the garment that God has for you, if you want the resurrected life, if you want to live the abundant life that God has planned for you, I'm going to ask you to pray with me this morning. And I'm going to ask you to pray, to repeat after me. I'm, I'm going to pray a sentence, and then I'm going to give you time to respond and pray the same thing. And look, if you mean it in your heart, if you confess the Lord with your mouth, then you shall be saved. It's, it's, your, it's the beginning of a new life for you. So if you want the resurrected life, I'm going to ask you to pray with me now. Let's pray. Lord God, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Lord, I ask that you would come into my life. I ask that you would be my Lord and Savior. You are God. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to live for you. God, I ask that you fill me with your spirit so I can have the resurrected life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children Be gracious to you, the Lord turn.